Hi, this is Cliff Coolidge. I'm a network and technical specialist here at uh, Omnitron Systems. In today's video, I'll be discussing what a media converter is and how to use it. In networking, a media converter is a device that takes one type of physical connection and changes it to another. Let's use a standard Ethernet connection, for example. The two most common types of media or connections you will find are well, an RJ45 port and the fiber optic port, uh, which includes ST, SC, LC, and SFP connection types, uh, which we'll discuss shortly. Say you have a network switch that will only support uh, RJ45 interface, but uh, you need to connect to a secondary switch, which is specifically fiber. A media converter will help you bridge the two connection types uh, so that both switches can communicate without the need to either upgrade or change the existing switches. Aside from the obvious benefit of uh, changing the connection type, Conversion to a different medium will also inherit the characteristics of the port. For Ethernet, the maximum distance uh, for a RJ45 or copper connection is roughly 100 meters. Using Ethernet again, uh, what if you have uh, two RJ45 copper switches that, uh, well, you want to exceed that distance of 100 meters? Well, connecting two fiber media converters in between can easily extend the distance anywhere from 220 to 550 meters upwards to 160 kilometers or even up to 180 kilometers. Uh, and that's roughly 100 to 110 miles for anybody that's uh, in the US. So, we used Ethernet as our main example so far. Well, in networking, there are quite a few other methods that devices communicate uh, or protocols. Just to touch on some of the more common media converters, uh, there's converters for T1, uh, E1, uh, T3, E3, uh, STM1, uh, which are some legacy data connections, and there's also uh, some more of the analog connections like RS-232, 422, and 485. Uh, which are generally, uh, well, serial connections. There are even media converter applications that can be used to convert from one fiber type to another, if you're familiar with uh, multi-mode and single-mode cabling. Converting fiber to fiber connections can also lead into more advanced applications such as CWDM and DWDM, aka multiplexing. Let's get back to the fundamentals. Here are some of the more common port types you will see on a media converter. Uh, we touched on these at the start of the video, but uh, here are some uh, visuals. For fiber ports, we'll start with the fixed or non-changeable connectors. Keep in mind that all of the fiber connections can be either multi-mode or single mode. So ST, uh, this is a circular connection with a locking mechanism uh, on the fiber. Easy to remember is ST with stick and twist since that's how you secure the connection. SC, this is likely the most common fixed connection. Uh, the locking mechanism is another simple analogy, uh, stick and click, uh, since there's an audible click when secured. And LC, this connection is a smaller form factor than the others and features a thumb lock uh, mechanism on the fiber. Uh, this is one of the mo more recent designs and uses the same fiber connection as the next one on our list, SFP. SFP is just an LC connection that's interchangeable. Multi-mode, single-mode, CWDM, DWDM, uh, different data rates. Uh, these will add flexibility to your network and uh, all of your media converters. Uh, moving on to uh, other physical connections. For Ethernet and T1, there'll be a RJ45 connection or copper connection. For T1E1, uh, RJ48, which is technically a difference in the pinout, but it's the same physical connection as an RJ45. T3E3 will generally use coax uh, and RS-232, 422, and 45 uh, generally use either a DB9 or some kind of terminal type connection uh, punch or punch down blocks. Uh, revisiting the Ethernet RJ45 port for a second, uh, certain media converters will also support supplying power to other devices uh, on your network, such as a camera or access point. Uh, this is known as PoE, uh, or power over ethernet. Uh, media converters come in many shapes and sizes and can be installed at uh, different locations uh, based on the application. In a server room, you would likely be rack mounting the converters, uh, which could 
be as simple as using a metal rack insert, or if there are multiple connections being converted, a fully powered chassis can be used uh, so all converters can be powered from a single powering source. For outdoor or more specialized installations, wall mounts can be used to secure with screws to a wall, or if a DIN rail is available, there are options for that as well. Common powering methods are with a standard AC adapter, a DC terminal connection, or even with a previously mentioned PoE powering. Okay, now that we've discussed all of the media converters uh, and all of the protocols involved, connector types and all that, uh, well, I'm going to show you how to use one. So now I'm going to show you how to use a media converter. In this application, uh, let's say this switch at uh, location A is let's say 50 miles away. And you require a fiber connection just to uh, bridge it because, well, copper is limited to around uh, 100 meters. And you have, uh, at location B, you have a local switch uh, to the media converter itself. And, uh, well, it only accepts a copper connection. So, this is how you do that. Pretty much you take the media converter, uh, plug it in, can't work without power. You take the fiber connection, you establish that. Uh, we look at the LED statuses, it looks like it is showing a gigabit link here, so the connection is good. Uh, your fiber connection is solid and uh, data can pass between the media converter and the switch. But uh, at your local end, pretty much all you have to do is take your RJ45 copper cable, plug it in, and plug it in to the corresponding port that you're going to be using. And then you confirm the link status, which it looks like it's linked to the gig as well. So there you go. Uh, you just converted uh, 50 to 100 miles of fiber to uh, copper here uh, to connect your two sites. Please subscribe to Omnitron's YouTube channel for more networking tips. Thanks for watching.